said today, um, let's see, we are going to watch Seven Hunting Mysteries That Took Years to Solve. So yeah, let's get going. That took years to solve. We will be discussing dark and gruesome topics, so you have been warned. Starting off with number seven is the mysterious vanishment of Anastasia Nikolaevna. In 1918, during the October Revolution within Russia, Tsar Nicholas II and all of his family members were executed by the secret police. However, since their bodies were never found, many women claimed to be Anastasia herself. Dozens of them, in fact. One of the more notable ones, Anna Anderson, had went as far as claiming she had lost all memory of the execution at all, as she had been busy living in an asylum. Since her body was yet to be found, she was able to fool people into believing her own story. Skeletons were eventually sighted and dug up that remained from the family in 1991. Yet two bodies still went missing. Whose two bodies were they, you may ask? None other than Anastasia's and her sister. The search continued as that event actually strengthened people's arguments of them claiming to be Anastasia. Event Why this happened in this little tip? Eventually, two burned skeletons were sighted near the site where the skeletons were, but inside of a pit in 2007. After a DNA test, it was confirmed that one of the skeletons was in fact Anastasia. It took nearly 90 years to confirm the death of Anastasia. Up next for number 6 is an audio file that ended up causing a lot of controversy and confusion back within its day. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or the NOAA, recorded a loud and strange sound through their deep-sea microphones in 1997. came from the Pacific Ocean, the sound reaching a very long distance of over 5,000 kilometers, and had caused quite a large stir within the public. Many articles were written about this strange sound, worrying that it came from a large sea monster. Due to the fact of how incredibly natural sounding it is, people speculated it was an air bubble, or a fin pedaling, or a creature consuming another. Many people really wanted this bloop to have come from a large fantasy creature. Yet many long studies prove that mythical creatures remain to be mythical. The NOAA has begun running an acoustic survey in the Bransfield Strait at Drake Passage in 2005, examining sounds within the area. It lasted five years, ending in 2010. They discovered that sounds of an ice quake, ice cracking and breaking apart, were identical to the acoustic survey of the bloop. Robert Ziak, an avid member of the NOAA, had claimed that many were misled by the sound being from an organic creature, due to the fact that it was played and popularized at a much quicker rate. If played at real time, the sound would sound like rumbling and shaking. The bloop was nothing more but ice clashing against each other. For number five, we have the identification of the Grateful Doe. In 1995, a man was killed in a devastating car crash in Virginia. He had no ID on it and the images taken of the tragic incident involved a star tattoo located on his arm, two Grateful Dead ticket stubs, and a note that was addressed to a man called Jason. Once the images circulated within the internet, the corpse was granted the nickname Grateful Doe. His family had been looking for him all this time as well, wondering what had happened to the their child that just didn't return home that day. The internet had not known about the identity of the person at all, up until people on Reddit chose to examine the images themselves and identify the man. A user by the name of Grey Metal had posted the image of the man, asking Reddit Web Sleuths, a website dedicated to finding missing people, and Imgur, any sort of info about the man. Many more images of the Grateful Doe were messaged to Grey Metal, as many were joining in on the research, making sketches of the man. Lisa Johannick, an operator of True Crime Facebook pages, was contacted by Margareta Evans after Mrs. Evans had heard a broadcast asking about a man in Myrtle Beach. She confessed that it was her son in the images, as she was confirmed by a judge that she is the son of the man. His identified name is Jason Callahan. At number four, we have the sudden disappearing of a 19-day-old infant. Carlina White was in the hospital on August 4, 1987 in New York's Harlem Hospital Center. She had been sick for days due to an infection and high fever, and had to stay at the hospital. She swallowed liquid which caused the infection, and had a fever of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, or 40 degrees Celsius. Her parents rushed her to the hospital, and a nurse had approached them and took their baby to nurse them. Yet the woman was not a nurse that worked at the hospital. She was a completely different and irrelevant woman that had no involvement with anything in regards to the hospital. She dressed as a nurse and kidnapped the child. 
The parents sued the hospital and won a settlement. The kidnapping of Carlina White is the first non-parental abduction of an infant in New York. That's not the craziest part. Carlina White was actually found 23 whole years later. In 2010, she was rediscovered as Nedra Nettie Nance and had discovered that she was kidnapped once she saw images of herself as an infant with other parents that wasn't her quote-unquote mom, Anagetta Ann Petway. She was raised in Connecticut by Ann for 23 years, eventually contacting her birth family and getting her DNA tested to confirm that she was from that family. Ann disappeared for a while but eventually turned herself in and pled guilty of kidnapping in 2011. With number three, we have the Grim Sleeper. In the 1980s, there had been several cases of black women, 38 to be exact, that had been killed and dumped into dumpsters and trash cans. In 2006, an L.A. Weekly journalist Christine Pelisic and her editor Jill Stewart were researching those previous murders and discovered that many were linked to the Grim Sleeper. There were many more murderers in the past committing these crimes as well. Louis Crane, Michael Hughes, Daniel Lee Seibert, it goes on. Yet the Grim Sleeper seemed to have only come back to murder girls and had risen again out of nowhere, causing people to coin the nickname for him. The Grim Sleeper eventually murdered another person in 2007, 14 years since his latest murder, and the hunt was on. He had a $500,000 bounty on his head from Los Angeles officials and even appeared on Fox's Most Wanted series. Only one girl survived throughout all of his attacks. The Grim Sleeper was eventually caught and arrested in 2010 and was sentenced to death for 10 murders and one attempted murder. His identity is Lonnie David Frank. Jr. At number two, we have rain. That wasn't your everyday kind of rain that you usually see. For over two months in 2001 during the summer, Kerala in India suffered through a never-ending rainfall that was just blood-red liquid spraying from the cloudy skies. Trees shed leaves that were gray, and 100 whole pounds or 1,600 ounces of this thick red liquid drenched the entire state. This was not the first time it happened, however, as it has been happening dating all the way back to 1818, with no one truly knowing why it had happened and will continue to happen in the future. This mysterious red liquid will always rain in the summer, and no other season for the blood-red rainfalls all around the world. The instance in 2001 had caused many to believe that a comet with alien life spores has caused this red rainfall, and many felt the panic, because it's not every day that you get soaked in rare alien spores. This theory was quickly debunked, and the real answer was once again spores. But not any futuristic creepy alien life force kind of spores, but the kind of airborne spores that get backed up from green algae. In 2015, however, they discovered the true culprit algae, as the Trentopolia algae. Blood red rains happen due to the Trentopolia and the spores it lets up in the air. But to rain crimson red ooze for two straight months is something that was never heard of prior. No one truly knows why it rained that long, yet many know it wasn't the last time it will happen in the world. Finishing off this list is a story of true determination that proves how intriguing mysteries can truly be to someone. Larry Wellborn, a journalist for the Orange County Register, his main motivation and goal was to figure out the true way that Linda Cummings had been killed in her hotel room. Linda Cummings was found hung in 1974, naked, wearing absolutely nothing. After a police investigation, they ruled her death as a suicide and left it at that, even when they were portrayed conflicting info. Yet listening to her backstory, you can understand why the police thought it was suicide. Her mother died of cancer not too long after she was born. And since her father couldn't take good care of her and her two sisters, each of them were placed in foster homes. Once Linda was a teenager, she chose to move in with her dad. However, her dad was a very heavy drinker and made life hell for her in their house. She was forced to move out at 18 years old into a motel, where she was found dead 10 years later. They were unable to determine whether she had picked up her father's addictive habits and claimed it was her depression that ended up driving her to suicide. Wellborn didn't buy it. He investigated on the case himself, reporting on it for 31 whole years. His main suspect was the building manager, who was convicted of another murder six months after Linda's quote-unquote suicide. Wellborn had over 60 whole interviews for his article. He eventually published the article in eight whole parts, written like a biography about the life of Linda Cummings. Once the articles were published and portrayed hard evidence, the building manager was found guilty of the murder of Linda Cummings and was arrested and sentenced on behalf of her death. One man spent three whole decades of his life to find the true answer of the case, to find the final piece of the puzzle that ended up bringing justice to the worst. And that's our list. Did you agree? Disagree? Have any more suggestions for mysteries we missed over the course of the video? Let us know in the comments section. We love hearing from you. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like the video. So yeah, guys, that is all the mystery something. But um, some of it could be true because... Our teacher on grade three said um, the liquid became red. Became red and then 
I saw it was the blood that someone killed, and then uh, they put it on the river or something, and then the water became um red. But te the teachers, our teacher said that it could be a chemical, cause sometimes a chemical could be one of the reasons, cause. Some chemicals are red, and some of the chemicals are mixed, and then it equals it could be red. So yeah, I hope you like this video. Smash the like button right there, and please subscribe to my channel. And comment down below. Um, should I play? Um. Should I play one of my games? So yeah. Bye guys. Oh.